Hello everybody, welcome to another video. This is Dimitri, thank you for tuning in as usual. I really appreciate it. Now, I had to spray myself with uh, something that I actually enjoy, which was Guerlain um, Eau de Parfum, because I'm gonna be talking about 10 perfumes that I actually hate, and I want it to at least smell good while doing so. I have a few samples with me right now, and uh, others I actually do not own anymore simply because I threw them in a the trash since I was so disgusted by uh, the scents but we're gonna get into that a little bit later now please do not feel offended if I talk in a certain way about a perfume that you actually appreciate or use or have as a signature mm -hmm. scent or whatever it is because perfume in general is all matter of personal taste uh, the same goes with food, with movies, with books. Maybe I'm into Chinese food, maybe you're into Indian food, maybe I like action movies and you might be into drama movies. It's the same thing with perfumes. Everybody has different opinions and tastes and I'm just gonna let you know what mine are concerning certain scents. So without any further ado, let's proceed. I'm gonna start off with one of those fragrances that comes from a house that I respect a lot and puts out so many quality scents that I found it a bit um, uh, shameful for them to release such a perfume, which is actually one of the most loved in the perfume community. Everybody seems to love it, and I, when I actually tried it, I found myself almost nauseated. I almost wanted to throw out, throw up, uh, but... Yeah, it's the house of Amouage, which I respect a lot, and I actually own a bottle of, and I actually really appreciate the quality that they put into their scents. But they came out with a perfume that is so appalling to my taste, gave me such a, a big headache, that I was actually impressed in a negative way, especially considering that everybody loves it. In case you didn't guess, it's Reflection Man. Now boys, if you want to smell like a giant marshmallow, then this is your perfume. Honestly, this is not for me. If I could describe it in a very short way, I would say that it's an overly sweet, kind of lactonic, vanillic, floral perfume that does not say masculinity at all. It barely even says femininity. It just says, I don't know what I'm doing. This has been done in such a bad way that I think that Amouage's effort into putting out a mainstream fragrance have just gone to basically uh, interrupt a series of amazing fragrances that they have been making since the 80s. I really love that perfume brand, but with Reflection Man, it's a big miss. It could be an okay fragrance for a woman if she's kind of trashy perhaps, but honestly, this is a big no to me. So, yep. Next, I wanna tell you about a perfume that I actually had to throw my sample in the trash because it was so bad. It's on the cheap side. It's very talked about in the internet community, especially considering that it's so cheap that everybody could afford it and just probably think that it would make a cool scent to wear at school or maybe at university or whatever. I'm talking about Mont Blanc Individuel, which happens to be a very pushed perfume for some reason. People claim that it has a raspberry note and it smells okay, but to be honest, if you want to smell like basically a laundry detergent or a bathroom cleaner or any sort of musk that is very cheap and very low quality, then go ahead and buy it. Next, what else could we talk about? I'm gonna say a few words about Pegasus, which is a perfume from the company of Parfum de Marly. Now, this to me is probably the most artificial almond vanillic perfume that there is nowadays. It smells awful. And apparently a lot of uh, YouTubers say that they get compliments with this. I really don't see how that could happen, perhaps because the mm, biggest part of people, the biggest part of the majority of people nowadays like to wear excessively sweet and uh, coumarinic caramel-like perfumes. And this falls into the category of excessively sweet, uh, kind of in your face, a very cheap smelling perfume. 
I think. It's, it just leaves you with a cloud of fake notes. And honestly, I can assure you that this is 100% synthetic, but not done in a good way. And when you're paying 200 bucks for a perfume such as Parfum de Marlis Pegasus, I expect a lot more. But anyways, I find that most Parfum de Marlis have that artificial plasticky uh, note in them that makes them a bit of putting to my nose. There's a few good ones, but the whole majority of them are not good and I would never pay 200 bucks for a 100 ml of a juice that just smells bad. Okay, so the fourth perfume uh, can actually take the crown as one of the worst fragrances ever made in the history of humanity. I'm talking about Penhaligon's Alfetti. This perfume, which claims to have oud in their notes, happens to be one of the most devastatingly appalling and ghastly things that I ever put my nose on. And out of curiosity, I went on for Grantica to see what people were saying, and most would actually say that it's a good scent and they like it. Well, I really don't get what there is to like here, and I was excessively surprised to see that the main note that, according to people, is in this perfume is oud. And in my opinion, there's basically no trace of oud in this scent. It's as if this scent was created in five minutes in a lab by a robot while throwing ingredients together and just going like, all right, let's slap a 200 euro bill attached to this bottle and people would just love it because it's a oud based perfume. Well, a shame on you, Penhaligon. You used to put out some high quality stuff back in the days, but coming out with a perfume such as Alfetti is a big mistake in my honest opinion. Now my number five most hated perfume ever happens to be one from a brand that everybody knows, which is Creed, who happens to put out a lot of quality scents, very pleasant, but also created some of the worst perfumes ever. And to me, the worst one, easily, is Silver Mountain Water, which happens to be the most screechy, metallic, annoying accord that I have smelled in the past decade. It's almost as if you took your nails and just screeched them against the blackboard, and that's the feeling I get with Silver Mountain Water. I also had to throw away that decant that I owned. Terrible stuff. Just as bad as Naxos. Now Naxos is a perfume that claims to have tobacco in it and it's from the house of Sergioff which is a perfume brand that I really do not like. I tried a few of those scents and honestly I can tell you that despite the fact that I'm Italian and it's an Italian niche brand I really despise it. So far I tried eight perfumes from that brand and I did not like one. And Naxos probably, along with a few more, takes the cake as one of the worst perfumes ever made for a man. It could be an okay scent for a woman, but I do not see how people actually enjoy this. To me, it's just an overly sweet, uh, ambery, kumarinic, fake smelling perfume that has no traces of tobacco. It's just a sweet lavender taken to the excess. Honestly, not for me. Now my number seven perfume that I really do not like, uh, despite the fact that I had high expectations from this one, is El Born from Carner Barcelona. And I will probably never finish this 2ml sample simply because I do not want to smell like a crème brûlée. For those of you who don't know, basically a crème brûlée is a typical dessert of France where the waiter brings you this cream that is actually a caramel based on top and he burns it right in front of you so it forms a crust and that moment when the waiter burns the crust is actually what encapsulates a born. This actually contains a very high quality vanilla note extracted by CO2 but honestly, it's very annoying to my olfactive system. It's something that I cannot withstand. I do not want to smell like a crème brûlée anyways. So 
to me at Bourne is a big and huge no despite the fact that it uses and I can tell some high quality material but it's overly sweet and really annoying to my olfactive system next I have a perfume right here that is called pulp by the house of Byredo which is a house that I enjoy quite a little bit I do not own bottles yet but their Bal d'Afrique is a very interesting scent whereas pulp is basically a replica of a perfume that smells like rotten figs now if you imagine a pile of rotten figs with flies flying all over it as if they were gonna eat it like it was uh, fe feces basically then you have Byredo Pulp one of the most horrible perfumes oh when I actually sprayed this oh my god about six months ago when I got the sample I had to scrub it off right away because it was so annoying and so powerful and the problem was that it would not get off my arm this is one of the most potent horrendous smelling things that I ever put my nose on terrible stuff very artistic but I do not want to smell artistic I want to smell good so pulp not really my cup of tea another one that comes from a house that I love which is Dior but happens to be one of the worst fragrances ever made in my opinion is Feve Delicieuse now most of their private line is really amazing I think they all smell really good and they're all really easy to wear and easy to love but Feve Delicieuse to me it's, it's like a, a really messy perfume and it's basically an expensive version of a cheap perfume that just mixes uh, the notes of vanilla and coumarin and all those ambery notes that are well are good if you actually mix them with some moody notes and florals and you actually go easy on a trigger when you dose the formula but in here it's just everything is exploded it's basically an explosion of sugary coumarinic cheap smelling uh, tonka beans I really don't like this I really don't enjoy it yet Dior is one of the greatest houses to me especially when it comes to designers now I kept the worst for the last one because honestly when I saw the price tag attached to this perfume which happens to be from the house of Sergio again I was expecting to find the scent of my life why because this is a 600 euros perfume now I was quite uh, appalled when I first smelled it I'm talking about Pico Valladama by the way I was appalled by it because I honestly think this replicates the smell of a dollar store that sells shampoos for five bucks and honestly if you want to smell like this I suggest you just go ahead and buy some shampoo and some soap get yourself a shower and save yourself 595 euros there is no way on earth that I see anybody spending so much money on a perfume that enhances the notes of musk and some fruity tones by the help of aldehydes and this is a aldehydic bomb as you can tell right away but honestly I'm not even sure that a human being created this I do not see how anybody could have made this it's as if a person just threw in some ingredients and decided yeah all right it's done probably made in 10 minutes and again from the house of Sergio now fellas I want you to understand that in order for you to smell good you do not need to spend tons of money because as you can see many fragrances that I named here are excessively expensive yet that does not ensure that you will smell good on the contrary most often especially in the niche industry of nowadays maybe 90% of the times you're gonna end up with a perfume that smells generic and does not smell good at all or maybe overly sweet and basically unwearable so just focus 
personally on the notes that you love and focus on the brands that are actually worth checking out. And I'm going to give you a few examples. If you want to find out what a good brand is and what a bad brand is, just look out at the output of perfumes that a brand puts in the market every year. Now, if a brand decides to put out more than two, maximum three perfumes every year, then put it aside and forget about it because that translates into poor directive, dire, um, poor uh, creative direction, meaning that a owner of a certain brand will not put as much attention in a perfume if he has to do 10 perfumes every single year just to please the masses and make different perfumes for different people. It's a little bit like going at a restaurant, for example, and seeing pages and pages of menu. And you can rest assured that the chef of a restaurant that has tons of dishes will not put a lot of attention into the details of those dishes and you will end up having a terrible dinner or lunch. Now, most uh, high-end restaurants actually know that if you want to put out quality stuff you need to have one or two pages of menu at most and put a lot of attention into every single ingredient and enhance those ingredients with the right type of cooking it's the same with perfumes guys there is no way that a brand can actually put out 10 perfumes every year and put quality in them so instead focus on a few great niche or designer brands that actually have a low output of perfumes. To name a few, you can check out the houses of Rogue Perfumery, Dusita, you have Sonoma Scent Studio, you have Bogue, you have a few more like Forte Manle and others that I will actually write down for you to check out because those are really worth it. Now, I beg you not to take uh, whatever I told you too personally because this channel is all about opinions. And of course, I'm not going to like every single perfume I put my nose on. And I want you to know about it. I just don't want you to think that uh, everything that I talk about is something that pleases me because on quite the opposite, I am of the school of thoughts that most perfumes nowadays just don't smell good or are just copies of one another so i'm looking into finding good creative brands and good creative perfumes that actually portray what perfumery should all be about which is smelling good while having a different touch and an artistic uh, view of things so again please Whatever I said, if you feel offended, don't take it too personally. That's not the point of this video. This was just a video to have fun during this very difficult times. We're all stuck at home and I wish I could actually make more uh, videos. But honestly, I have to stay with my family as well. This is a moment where I want to be with them as much as possible. That being said, I really appreciate you watching this until the end. I will see you again soon. And I hope you're doing just well. I sure am. Take it easy and see you next time.